So we're here at kernelci.org. So what's going on here? Well, this is a project uh, that we've started as a community project to help uh, the upstream kernel maintainers um, validate their changes uh, across uh, ARM, ARM64, and x86 platforms. So what you're seeing here is the jobs detail page for the mainline kernel. Now we do mainline, next, ARM SOC, and a few of the other uh, maintainers trees. Essentially what we do is we build every single def config for ARM, ARM64, and x86, and then we boot test them and provide the results either in an email report form that goes up to the mailing list, or we provide this website where you can dig down into different uh, bits of information if there's failures. So when you see this here, this is all the various um, builds of mainline. So here's our git describe, which is our kernel version here, uh, what branch it was built from, and the exact commit. And then at a glance, you can see how many def configs we built and how many failed, and how many platforms were booted and how many failed. And then the dates right here, um, it's all sequential. So this is the last 14 days, and you can see quite a, quite a lot of activity happens on mainline. Um, so when we look at maybe what one of these build reports looks like for a particular uh, build, you can see how many dev configs we built, how many failed, and how many were um, unknown. And so it's quite a few. Uh, we have the architectures listed here, so you see ARM, ARM64, and then the actual dev config name um, listed on the left. So as you scroll through, you should see quite a few uh, of them. So if we take a look, if you click on any of these, what you can see is what images are produced, uh, links to all the binaries, and if you click the build log here. Uh, you'll take it directly to, to the log for the build. Um, on the other hand, here's what our boot reporting uh, looks like. So currently right now, we have five labs distributed all over the world providing the hardware for this. So we, we have about 260 boots every time a tree changes upstream. Um, and the boards here are listed um, uh, as their upstream name. So if you're ever interested in does my board have support upstream, you can simply come to this website here and uh, look at the details of how we're booting the board. All of the load addresses and the U-boot configuration or the bootloader configurations are, are um, present here. So is this a new new solution? It is, yeah. This is um, the last six months we've been working on this and, and really um, at um, this connect we've kind of made it public uh, and, and started to bring in wider audiences for feedback. So is the idea that uh Anybody doing anything to Linux gets tested on everything every time. Exactly. Is that what happens? Yeah, and, and what we find is we, we can catch the breakages before they're merged into the upstream trees, such as like Linux's tree. Um, and that's good because then the community can always count on boards booting on mainline. Uh, and we can work out what, what the uh, failures were before we actually um, uh, merge them into to trees people care about. But this is a big deal, no? Oh, this is a huge deal, and it's a very um, big effort. Uh, it's a lot of work to do but I think we're providing a lot of value. Um, so I can give you an example of a failure that we've detected. So um, here's a recent failure. Um, it was, you can see here, the git describe was next, so it was built on the next tree. We we're having a little bit of problems with, with, with some of the clock patches that have been merged. And what you see here is the kernel error, and the reason why, you can click this HTML link here, and it'll take you to the actual boot log. And if you can scroll through here, you can see how the platform was configured. And what you'll see is, ooh, there's lots of, of stack traces from the kernel. Well, uh, if we go back, one kernel developer might want to know, um, you know, how, how, how can I bisect this issue? And what we give is a table here with the good commit and the bad commits, and then basically a little summary for bisection. And you can even click this here, and it will give you a little starting script um, for the bisection. So we want to provide this information to the um, the maintainers, the developers that are patching the Linux kernel so that they're able to figure out what change broke it and how to get a fix in quickly so that uh, the trees aren't broken for very long. So what's the response by the, the, those guys? Well, uh, it depends. So if we, we catch it in like ARM SOC or, or Next, uh, typically uh, it's the same day that we're reporting fail failures. We found um, an interesting failure with some of the memory map sub subsystem and uh, we were able to report it and have it fixed in two days. Uh, which was great, but uh, what, what's the like the the enthusiasm or the, are people happy about this? Well, I, yeah, I think this, there's there hasn't been a system like this before um, that's that's public and it's focused on the upstream kernel. There might have been other systems that that were um, developed uh, as proprietary solutions, um, and so uh, Intel has has a similar thing called Zero Day. Uh, however, um, some of that stuff is is closed source to them, 
and they, they, they're not willing to share it. So we had to go ahead and, and build our own system um, for this. Do they test all the ARM boards? Uh, I don't believe they do, no. But they mainly do it in, in uh, virtual machines. And uh, being Intel, they have uh, large amounts of hardware. So it's easy for them to, to scale and, and to, to do some really good testing, which they do. And it's, it's, very, uh, it's not just for Intel. They do report issues they find um, to, to ARM developers. So, so they're working pretty good in, in the community. So before today, uh, there was a bunch of guys with a bunch of boards, each testing manually, separately, uh, different things, and very exactly. slowly. It took months to see if there was a bug. Or exactly, what? yeah, and, and all of this testing is happening. However, it's spread out throughout the community, and so this is kernelci.org aims to bring all of the testing together and unify it and provide unified reports about what's working and what's not working and so that we can get these issues fixed quickly. Um, now, this is just doing boot testing and very, very minimal. I mean, we're, we're tra tracking stuff like uh, how long it takes the kernel to boot. Um, uh, can you run basic user space tests? Ideally, we want to actually um, expand this to running performance benchmarks to test, you know, um, performance, re catch performance regressions as they happen upstream. Uh, so that's the, the end goal, but we're not there yet. So do the kernel developers have to opt in for this server so they just all get the email automatically? Yeah, so they, they get the emails. Um, the public trees, um, so mainline, next, ARM SOC, stable trees, um, you can sign up on our kernel uh, build report mailing list and you can receive these notifications without having to, to do anything special. Um, some of the developer trees, we have a private mailing list where you can have your, your tree subscribed and then we can build and uh, boot test your tree as well. So. Um, yeah. So was that some of the was was this one of the ideas that came out of uh, Lava stuff? Yeah. So actually, all behind the scenes here, Lava is driving a lot of this. Um, there's two automation frameworks. There's PyBoot developed by Kevin Hillman, and then obviously there's Lava. And so uh, here's my Lava server that's running, and you can see uh, here's all the jobs that have already ran for for a mainline kernel, um, and uh, there's quite a few of them. And so what Lava can do, what's really nice, is that uh, if we go to a, my reporting framework here. We're just starting to play around with this, but this will allow us to trend boot time over um, over time. So as the kernel mainline uh, progresses this way, we can make sure that the um, the boot times stay within the range that they're at. So this is a delta reporting view right here, where it shows uh, the variances between each boot. Now, if we untick tick this, what you can see is here's here's the raw boot times, and right underneath it. So uh, with multi v7 on the Arndale Octa platform, it's about five seconds, five and a half seconds boot time for the kernel. Uh, on the Exen Ex Exenos config, excuse me, it's a little, about two and a half seconds, and so you can kind of trend this over time. And what we're looking for with this view is to see large variances. Uh, if the, the kernel all of a sudden takes much longer to boot now, then we can catch that and report it. And we'll and if you actually. Uh, mouse over, you can see the kernel tag that was built. So we know what version caused the regression. And so this is the kind of things that we're, we're building with Lava and with kernelci.org to provide this uh, this information back to the developers. So this boot time, what else? Uh, right now, we, we have, this is kind of neat, I can show you here. Um, I'm looking for kernel exceptions and kernel warnings. And so uh, here, this is a filter that you can, um, oops, that Lava provides that will catch, look for certain um, test cases that fail. And so in this case, this is looking for kernel exceptions. And what you can see here is the kernel exception that was um, captured and failed by Lava. So we're also tracking the amount of kernel warnings and exceptions uh, for every boot. So this is just the beginning of where we want to go. We'd like to see you know um, more depth in our testing, um, really doing performance uh, benchmarking, whether that's um, you know some, some IO-based test or it's a networking performance test, and start to trend those over time so that eventually we have the entire uh, Linux kernel uh, subsystems covered with, with functional tests. So this is speeding up uh, Linux development. It, yes, and it, it's making it safer, and it's making sure that it's ensuring the changes that are being made um, are resulting in um, better performance and not worse performance. And that's what we want to do. And, and the idea is if we can test it upstream, then everybody that uses the Linux distribution is going to benefit because the distros don't run on bleeding edge kernels a lot of times. They pick it up every so often. So if we can ensure that there's a good base to start from, then the distros have to spend less time fixing, fixing bugs and they can work on other things to improve uh, their distribution. That's uh, really cool. So 260 boots, that means 260 boards? Uh, no, because there's there's different kernel configurations. So we we test um, multi v7 with LPAE and virtualization configurations. So it's not just um, um, one one boot to one uh, def config. There's multiple uh, def configs that boot many boards. So um, yeah, 260 boots happen every time a tree changes upstream. 
Uh, we're looking to increase that. Um, if you want your board, if you go to kernelci.org and don't see your board on there, um, send uh, info at kernelci.org an email, and uh, we'll uh, see if we can we can help you out. Maybe they should do some work to get it in there. Uh, yeah, and so that's that's the great part is that there's an actual API I can, I can show you. So if you go to api.kernelci.org, um, there's there's extensive documentation on how to get your boot reports, your build reports um, uh, published in the system so that labs around the world can use this and it doesn't have to be in a single lab. And that's that's what I find is that the, the hardware is spread out all over the world, but we can still have it unified in one place, and that's the goal of kernelci.org. Nice. So these guys like uh, Rockchip, for example, yeah. and uh, Oldwinner? Yeah, they, they uh, were kind enough to give me um, their pre-production runs for the QB Board 4, which is the um, Oldwinner A80 chip, and then this is the uh, Radix Rock. Rock 2, which is the RK3288 uh, chip. So we're going to put these into kernelci.org uh, and make sure that uh, any of the upstream work that, that happens on these platforms is uh, not causing any regressions. But I can imagine uh, lots of uh, different solutions in 2015. They will all want to be there. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Well, and, and some of the enterprise server platforms from ARM, you know, um, the, uh, all, the, all the 48, 64 cores, 96 cores, and all these guys. And that's when the regression testing becomes very, very critical because with that amount of cores, um, we have to make sure that the, the, the APIs inside the kernel that we have are scaled properly and that there's not, uh, not issues uh, just doing basic boot testing. But ideally, we'd like to do performance measurements as well. And uh, stretch goal would be power measurements, making sure that we can not only... Um, Increase performance, but then also decrease um, power consumption. So this is an octa-core big little A15, A A7. This is a quad-core A17. Yeah. There's so many different ARM SOCs, right? And it's pretty cool that Linux just works on all of them. Oh, that's the great part about Linux and, and the ARM ecosystem is that you can have so many different designs that um, work in different ways for different use cases, and, as, and essentially they all use you know similar technology. So uh, yeah, that's why I, I really enjoy working on these projects because I'd like to see the broad ecosystem on ARM improve uh, with, as well as being good citizens. You know, you, you notice I, I mentioned we're boot testing x86 is because any of the ARM changes to the ARM trees, we want to make sure that they, they're, uh, they don't break other architectures. So we are looking to expand, you know, to maybe PowerPC and MIPS at some point, just to make sure that we're being good citizens because that's what we want to do. But ARM is a pretty cool ecosystem. Oh, ARM is one of the best ecosystems. It's um, the best. It could be the best, yes. I, 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 you know, from what I've seen, I, I would agree that it is, it is the best. Um, the innovation around the ARM ships, you saw that the high keyboard um, this week here at Lenaro Connect, and just looking at a credit card, credit card sized uh, ARM V8 board is, is uh, quite amazing. All right, this is cool.